Good evening, church family. Wednesday, March 25th, 2020, here from New Life Baptist Church in Prince Frederick, Maryland. I'm so glad you've taken a moment to join us for this evening's service. I apologize, we couldn't be in person, and uh, it kills me that we can't do that. I hate it, uh, but I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you've decided to watch, and I'm going to try to be helpful to you tonight. Uh, for those of you that might be watching uh, because you're a church member, or you might be watching for the first time, uh, you may be stumbled across this, or you may be a friend of ours, and you decided to check it out. Thank you so much for giving us a try tonight. I'm going to try to teach you from the Bible tonight uh, on faith, and I've talked about that a lot lately. Uh, but in this trying time in our present day, I think faith is most helpful. And so I'm going to give you a little Bible study on that tonight. It's not going to take real long, but we're going to have a typical Wednesday night service. And I want to come to you here from our church and from our auditorium, this beautiful place in which the Lord's provided us. And I want to take a minute uh, and just to kind of give you an update on our church and where we're at and what's going on. At the same time, uh, give you some prayer requests of some of our folks that you might not have seen for the last couple of days uh, or maybe not have spoken to in the last couple of days. And so I want to give you a little update on that and just kind of tell you what's going on here. I'm sorry we can't be together tonight. I hate it. it drives me crazy. I want to shake your hand. I want to see you. I want to have a conversation with you. I want to see how your week's going. I want to check up on your family. I want to pray for you. I want to love on you. And I'm going to have to do that from afar right now. And so I'm here. If you need anything, if there's anything I can help with, if there's any way that I could be of assistance, would you call me? Call me on my cell phone. You can call the church number here, 410-535-2266. And that'll go straight to my cell phone personally. Uh, you can send an email at NLBC of Calvert County at Outlook.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook. You can go to our website at NLBCofCalvert.com. Uh, let me also remind you that NLBCofCalvert.com is the place in which you can go for online giving. And please don't forget the Lord. Don't forget our church in this trying time. I know a lot of folks are going through hard times. I'm not after your money. I'm just after for what you want to give to the Lord so that we have provided a way for you to do that, and that is via our website. So please go on there, nlbcofcalvert.com, on the far right column at the top. Click on the Give button, and that will direct you. We do also have a text number for giving, and if you'd like to do that via text, you are able to do that. Simply call, ask for that number, and I can give that to you or you can send a message, and I'll provide that to you. And so I want to go ahead and take some minutes now and talk about uh, our people and the prayer requests and what they have. And so I want to go ahead and get into that here in just a moment. But let me take a minute and go ahead and encourage you real quickly about do not slack off for the Lord in these coming days. It's easy to do. You're home right now. You're comfortable. You're probably sitting in the bed or a recliner. You probably got a blanket over your legs. Uh, you might have some comfy socks on or some slippers. You might have a bag of chips or maybe some Fritos right next to you. And it's easy. It's easy to forget where you are. But don't forget that you're in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to be there and, and ready and willing and able to listen up to the lesson tonight so that it can be a help to you. And don't get slack in this time. Use it to your advantage. This coronavirus, it slowed us down some. And praise God that he slowed us down some. Remember if I, what you heard me preach on Sunday, the Lord's trying to get our attention. And boy, I hope we're giving it to him. And so with you there at home, I pray that you're paying attention. I pray that you're focused for him. Put the dogs away. Put the cats away. Put the kids away if you have to. Uh, tie them up. Sit them down. And uh, give them something to keep them occupied. How about church? And so I want you to be focused on church this evening. And I want you to be in prayer for our internet. Currently, right now, we have the best internet our area provides. And it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. Horrible. One of the reasons in which I have to upload this video for you tonight. And so please be in prayer for the internet for our church. We have a few things in the works and I'm waiting on a couple of phone calls that we might be able to have a way around our, our situation. And so you pray about that and we'll be able to hopefully live stream services at some point. But right now we're just simply not able to. It hinders us, uh, but we'll make do with what we got. And we glorify the Lord with what we have. I'm thankful that we have an opportunity some way, somehow. There are churches out there that don't, they don't have as many opportunities as we're having right now. 
Uh, they're not as blessed as we are, and I'm thankful for good church people. I'm thankful for people who let the Lord use them and what it provided to this church to be able and enable us to do what we're doing now. So I'm glad and thankful for the Lord and what he's done. And praise God for all he's done in these last couple of years at this church. What an amazing accomplishment God's done. And he does it through people. He uses you. And so we're thankful for that. I'm glad that you've let the Lord use you. And uh, we're so thankful. So let me give you some prayer requests tonight real quick. First of all, let me give you our verse for this week. 1 Peter 4, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch under prayer. The Lord reminds us here there's a lot going on in a lot of places. The end is near. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes, he wants us to be vigilant. He wants us to be uh, uh, aware of our surroundings. He wants us to be helpful to those that are in need. And at the same time, he says, Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Look forward to Jesus coming back in prayer. And so pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your, your, your community, your nation, your world in which you live, your leadership that is in our government and in different leadership positions, your pastor and family. Uh, your close family and their needs, and you keep them in prayer. And I have a lot of praises tonight for the Lord. Praise the Lord for what He's done. Praise the Lord for a lot of views on our page and in our message over this coming this past Sunday. Boy, I was thankful for the number of folks that tuned in. We had well over a hundred folks tune into our service at some point or another on Sunday. Who knows how long they stuck around? I'm not sure, but I sure am glad that we were able to get that platform out. And many of our friends and family viewed that. I'm thankful for the Lord for what he did there and how he used it. Uh, praise the Lord for the people that have gotten saved because of this. I had a, a person here on Sunday at church and she said, Preacher, I, I, I was trying to witness to somebody and I didn't know how to do it. And I said, I need to get them to church so that they can know how to get saved. I'm glad she knew where to bring them. And at the same time, she said, if we can't be there, I know that online they'll be able to have it. So she said, are you going to share this video today? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'm going to share it. And she said, I want to share it with them, and I want them to watch it, and I want them to hear the plan of salvation. So very thankful for what the Lord has done there. I'm thankful for the opportunities he's given and the relationships that have opened up because of this situation. There's always a silver lining with the Lord uh, in all things. He does all things. Remember Romans 8, 28. In all things, they work together for good to them that love God. And so praise the Lord for that. And then uh, praise the Lord for the gospel reaching more places than it ever has before in the history of mankind. Do you realize that because of technology, the gospel has gotten out into more places than ever before in the history of man? And so maybe God's using this to his advantage on purpose, and we're thankful to be used by him and glad that he saw fit that we be born for such a time as this. So praise the Lord in all that he's done there. Moving on quickly for your sake. And for the sake of the service, I want to go over today, tonight some prayer requests that members of our church have. And I want you to keep these things in your heart and in your mind and pray for these things. Uh, first of all tonight, pray about our other churches in the area. Uh, fellow co-laborers that we pray for weekly. We think about uh, the different pastors in the area. And you pray for them in the tough time they're going through just like we are, trying to get this right for the Lord and trying to do well uh, to get you the message and to get you something that's helpful and to be able to encourage you throughout our weeks. And praise the Lord for all the folks and the technology that some of our fellow brothers and sisters have been able to use and just to be encouraging in this time. And man, it's exciting. And then, so we want to pray for them and we want to pray for our missionaries, especially Brother War. Chris War, a missionary family that we're able to support and privilege to partner with and their military folk out there in Italy. And they serve to the military and to Italy. And you know the hard time that Italy is going through right now. And Brother War, is, is his, he's the pastor of that church there in Italy. And Brother War has been going through some health issues. And so you pray for Brother Chris War, local family from here in Maryland, uh, served at our sister church uh, down at Patuxent Baptist Church for a long time in Maryland. And so folks that are close to our heart, you keep praying for our church, of course. Keep praying for the needs of our church. Pray that we can get back in fellowship soon. And then, of course, pray for some of these folks that have had some tough times because of this virus and because of the economy. Uh, if you remember Kayla and you remember some good friends of mine, uh, Kebram and some other folks that have visited the church that I've had the privilege of my life working with over the last several years and just some dear folks near and dear to my heart. I love them so dearly. And, uh, man, it hurts for me what they're going through right now. But the hospitality business has taken a tough hit. 
and you pray for these folks as some of them have lost their jobs in the last couple of days and it's hard right now and their faith is shaken and uh, they're they're in doubt they're wondering what's going on and you pray for them you pray for these folks that have come and visited our church you pray for these folks that you don't know that are losing their jobs and for my dear town park family if you happen to be watching I love you guys you know that I love you I miss you I long for you I'm praying for you I'm here for you and please reach out if there is anything I can do I pray that you'd reach out pray for our dear family friend Sherry Williams uh, Sherry's such a dear sweet lady such a kind sweet lady and she's got a lot going on right now she's got some rough times that she's battling with you know as a church we've brought her name up before and uh, she's been on our list for a long time and she reached out yesterday and she's having a tough time and would you pray for Sherry and her tough time pray for Debbie's sister Debbie Norfolk's sister has an illness right now that they think may be has not been confirmed as of right now but it may be this coronavirus and her sister is up in age a little bit of course in the high danger zone and so they're very worried about that you pray for her and pray that this illness goes away and that it's cared for and that she's uh, she's uh, well in recovery and then remember Kathy Compton still healing uh, from her surgery with her stomach and of course the cancer in which she battles uh, pray for Elizabeth remember Elizabeth's been in the hospital since the premature birth of her baby and then Thomas pray for our dear brother Thomas and uh, Miss Peggy called me today and brother Thomas had to be uh, taken to the hospital earlier today with some issues with his uh, lungs and it turns out to be bilateral pneumonia and you pray for Thomas and we've been praying for him and I've been praying for him all day and you pray for Peggy as I know that she's concerned about her brother and you keep Thomas on your heart and you pray for Thomas tonight pray for all these dear folks and their different needs that they have right now and so go to the Lord in prayer for those things uh, take just a few minutes to yourself here sometime tonight and pray for your brothers and sisters be good to everybody because everybody's having a tough time and don't forget that people need your prayers and so you pray for them text them let you know that you're praying for them encourage them love on them let God use you and be a, a picture of Christ in these families in which we have the privilege to serve alongside and serve with. And so tonight, I'm going to get into a Bible lesson for the sake of the length of our video here. And I've got some notes that I want to give you. I've got some things that I want to share. And I think it'll be helpful to you. But I want to be mindful of your time. I'm not going to keep you for an hour. I don't plan to keep you any longer than 30 minutes. I hope to keep you less than that. I'm not sure what part of the dial your uh, screen is showing you right now with how much time is left, but at the same time, I want you to focus and pay attention on the Lord tonight, and I think it'll be helpful to you. Take your Bible, go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'll wait. I want you to see it in the Bible tonight. And so, if you don't have your Bible grab it. If you can't get up and grab it, get your phone out and download a Bible app if you need to. Uh, but if you don't have that, uh, follow real closely with the Lord's Word tonight, and I want to try to be a help to you. Hebrews chapter 11. As you get into Hebrews chapter 11, I want you to turn to verse 32. I want you to see verse 32, and I'm going to read you a little story in the Bible. Not necessarily a story, more like a documentary, a uh, uh, more like a, uh, a revealing, a reviewing, so to speak. And I want to give you something right now tonight that I think will be helpful in our current time with faith. You're going to see in this passage tonight some men and women that face some tough things. They went through some times. And I want to encourage you with that tonight. I want to show you Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 32. So follow along with me if you would in verse 32 as I read down through verse 40. Verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, 
not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, fermented, tormented, excuse me, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. We're going to get into the rest of that here in just a second. I'm going to show you another verse or two from the, uh, from the chapter just there after that. And I want to try to help you tonight. The men mentioned in verse 32 experienced some tall tasks. No doubt they experienced some stressful tasks. If you read through verses 33 down through verse 38, they went through some things. Just looking at it, the Bible says in verse 37, they were stoned, they were sawed asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. I don't know about you tonight, but I don't think that you're being afflicted in that area. I don't know of one of you being stoned tonight. I don't know of one of you being hidden in a cave tonight, having to run for your life for your faith tonight. These folks went through some trying times. These folks had some rough days. And yet it tells us down in verse 40, excuse me, verse 39, and these all having obtained a good report through faith. They went through all of this and maintained a good report through faith. And so verse 39, they kept their faith through all of it. And I asked this question, how on earth did they keep all their faith? I don't know that I could keep faith being stoned. I don't know that I could keep faith being sawn asunder. That means sawn in half. I don't know that I could keep the faith having to be removed from my loved ones and family into a desolate area. I can't tell you that I would have faith in that situation. I hope to. I'd long to have that kind of faith. But I can't promise you that I would do that. But in verse 39, the Hall of Fame chapter of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 in the Bible, in verse 39, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, then it goes on to tell us, received not the promise. The things in which they long for at the moment, the material things, the temporal things in which they long for, they didn't have it right away. It didn't become what they were looking for right away. But something was worth it. Someone was worth them going through the trials. Someone was worth them going through the pain and the heartaches. And that's where we find it in verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. The fulfillment for them was as it is for us, Jesus Christ. They were looking forward to someone They were looking forward to a redeemer, so to speak. They were looking back at a cross and saying, somebody is worth it, and his name is Jesus Christ. It says in verse 39, all having obtained a good report, not all the heroes of of faith experienced immediate triumph over their trials. Not all of the heroes of faith experienced triumph over their trials immediately. You may have something that you're facing today, and you're not going to win right now. You might not win tomorrow. You might not win next week. You might not win next year, but you're going to win. One way or the other, some way, somehow, God's going to pull you through. Whether it's here in this life or it's in glory at some point or another, you're going to make it. Jesus is worth it all. Jesus was worth it all then. Jesus was worth it all now. He's worth it all in the future. Whatever you're facing today, he's worth it. Now, chapter 12 and verse 2. What was building their faith? What were they talking about in verse 40? Chapter 12, right there below where you are. Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
when we're facing difficult times, you can look back and know that you had a Savior who faced difficult times. When you're uh, up against something and you don't know how to come through with it, you can rest assured that your Savior knows what it's like to go through trials. And yet, having known all that, he still decided to go through it for you and for me. And so, I said this. I, I, I make this statement to you. When we're facing difficult situations, when we're facing stressful times, when we're going to go somewhere in our lives, make sure that you have the right compass. Make sure that you have the right compass. Now, I give you an illustration. If you were lost, and you were headed somewhere, maybe you were on a trip, maybe you were walking in the woods, taking a hike, maybe you were driving in a desolate area that you weren't too familiar with. If you had somewhere to go, and you had a compass that would tell you north, south, east, and west, if you had a compass that took you in the right direction, but you kept that compass in your pocket, or you kept that compass in your backpack or your purse, or that compass was with you but not being used, how foolish would that be? If you had something that told you which direction to go, if you had something that led you in the right direction, but you refused to use it, how foolish would that be? You know as well as I do that that's a tool to be used to get you where you'd like to be. So I want you to make sure that you have that if you have a compass, that you hold it. If you have a compass, that you use it. If you have a compass, that you utilize it. Now, in order for that compass to work well, in order for that compass to work well, that compass has to be an honest compass. That compass has to be accurate. That compass has to be unwavering. That compass has to be direct. You know as well as I do, if you have that compass in your hand and that needle's jumping all over the place and it's not staying very straight, it's not leading you in the right direction, what good is it, right? Right? If it's not honest, if it's not headed you due north, if, if you're thinking you're going north and that bad boy's got you going west, it's no good. So I say that in the life in which you live today, in the steps in which you're taking, you've got to have the right compass. You've got to have the right direction. You've got to have the right, uh, the right guide, so to speak, the right pilot, so to speak. And you've got to make sure that it's good for you. It has to be these things. The right kind of a compass has to be honest. It has to be accurate. It has to be unwavering. It has to be direct. Otherwise, it's not a very good compass. There's no better compass in this life than Jesus Christ. There's no better compass in this life than Jesus Christ. There's no better compass in this universe than Jesus Christ. There's no better compass for you, for your friend, for your loved ones, for your ancestors, for your future members of your family. There's no better compass that exists than Jesus Christ. But let me remind you this. Christ is not a tool. Please don't treat him like one. Christ is not a hammer in your bag, fellas. Christ is not a, a rolling pin in your drawers, ladies. Christ is not a calculator, kids. Christ is God. He is your Father in heaven who cares very much for you. And so don't treat God like a tool. He's not something you only pull out when you're lost. He is our Lord who wants our faith and our commitment. You see, in order to receive, you must do. In order to have, you must do. What is the do? Trust Christ. It's one thing to say. It's another thing to do. So, some of you are going through something today. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you're in doubt. Maybe you're in fear. Maybe this virus has you on edge. Maybe quarantines got you all uh, quacked out. Maybe you're not sure how this is all going to turn out. Maybe it's the fear of the unknown. Maybe you have a loved one in the hospital tonight. Maybe there's somebody that you know and care for very much and they're going through a, a, a sickness or an illness. And you need a compass right about now. You need something to show you which way to go. You need something to stir you up, so to speak, in your faith. Let me make this statement. It takes faith, but faith is an action, not simply a plan or hope. Faith is an action. It takes work. 
You've got to work on your faith. You say, how am I going to make it? Well, I want to ask you, who's your compass tonight? Who's your author tonight? Verse 12, or chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It says Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the one who finished it all for you and for I. He died on that cross. He was buried. He rose again to prove that he had power over death. And he did that for you, for all the sins in which you've committed. And remember, your salvation is not about what you've done. It's all about what he did. It's not about how good you've been. It's not about what you feel in your heart. Trusting Christ is just that, trusting Christ. Salvation is through Christ, nothing else. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is nothing you can do to earn salvation. So therefore, if you're truly in Christ, you'll never lose salvation. So if you're wondering about your salvation, if you're wondering about whether or not you're saved, I'd ask you, have you ever trusted Christ? Have you ever asked Christ into your heart, and did he seal it? Do you know because you know? that you're saved. And if you're not, not tonight, I would challenge you to get saved. You need salvation. You need Christ. So you say, how am I going to make it? Who's your author? It's one thing to say Christ is your author. It's another thing to allow him to pilot. Too many of us as Christians, we want Christ on the plane, but we don't want Christ to fly it. And that's our problem, ladies and gentlemen. We want Christ as our phone a friend. We want Christ as our feel good. We want Christ to recognize our honor and our accomplishments for him. But so few of us allow him to fly the plane. If you would, Christ would be your pilot, not your co-pilot. You're the co-pilot. But see, you can change and veer off anytime you want to. Now, Christ doesn't desire that. He just wants to fly the plane. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to let him fly the plane. And I promise you this, you'll enjoy where you end up. You'll be thankful for the, for the, the landing spot, so to speak. But you've got to trust him. So I ask you in this trying time, I ask you with all that you're faced with today and all that you may be faced with tomorrow, what's your compass? Who's your author of your faith? And it's not just a hope. It's not just a plan. He's real. God's real. It's not just, oh, I trust him. Oh, I have faith in him. No, that's just words. Are you taking the steps to show that you have the faith? Have you been faithful in your Bible? Have you been faithful in your church? Have you been faithful in your prayer time? Have you been faithful to your Lord as you've expected him to be faithful to you? Oh, I have faith. God's going to pull me through. But you haven't read your Bible. Oh, I have faith that God's going to fix it all for me. He probably will. But he'd do it so much faster if you trusted him and showed you trusted him. And so let me ask you and encourage you tonight. What's your compass? What's your author? Stick with him. He's going places. I appreciate you being here with us tonight. I'm so thankful that you took time to watch. I hope this has been a help to you. Read it again, Hebrews 11. Go through verses 32 down through verse 40. See what these men had to fight through. See what these men, uh, it was much worse than a virus. It was much worse than doubt and fear. They actually had to live some of these things. But they saw it through to the end because they were looking at Jesus, their author and finisher of their faith. And so tonight, put more trust in him. Ask him to work in your life. Promise him that you'll do your part. And be excited and encouraged about what God will do in you, through you, and for you. And so New Life Baptist Church, until we meet again, thank you for being with us tonight. Reach out if I can help in any way, shape, or form. I love you. I miss you. I long to be with you. But until that time, I'll be praying for you. Take care.